everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at one of the weddings I've shot and how I go about editing my photos and how I save my presets. Alright, so this is one of the photos I picked out. I'm going to go ahead and open it with Photoshop. It's a raw file, so it's going to open up in the raw format. Alright, so the first process I do is the profile. So I'm shooting with Canon. Uh, this particular photo was taken, I believe, because I shoot with two bodies. I believe this is the R5. It could be actually the RP shot with the 50 RF uh, at 1.2. All right, so I'm gonna, usually I do the either camera portrait or the landscape. Sometimes the landscape just gives me a little bit too much contrast. In this case, I'm going to go ahead with the landscape. All right, so the first step is going to be with the light. I'm going to bring up a little bit more of the light. Bring down the highlights. Bring up the shadows a little bit. So you, you hold the Alt key. And that way you know you're not overexposing when you're bringing up the whites. And same thing for the blacks. So far, this is what we've done. Doesn't look like much. All right, now the color temperature, since this was raw, and if you're shooting in JPEG, it will matter uh, what's your white balance. But since it's raw, you can choose your own white balance at the end when you're editing. Probably gonna choose a little bit cooler tone because I definitely want the whites to pop. Since the groom is wearing a white suit and the white dress for the bride. Usually if I'm dealing with the skin, I will bring down the clarity to give it more of a softer look. Okay. I'm going to go in the curves. So this is the midtones. I'll bring up the midtones a little bit. Bring up the darks. Okay. Just the highlights. Smooth out the highlights a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and go into the color grading. I usually just mess around with the midtones and the highlights, not the shadows. Detail, the photo is pretty sharp. I don't have to sharpen it. I'll leave it as is. Uh, optics, I did see some chromatic aberration. So I'm going to remove some of the purples. There we go. Usually automatic profile will take care of that, but in this particular case, I had to manually add a little bit more. This is before and after. Definitely took care of that. I mean, this is pretty meticulous work. Uh, as far as clients, they're not really going to notice that. Um, so one of the presets that I have in here is actually it comes with uh, Adobe Photoshop. So it's under the adaptive portrait. I saved it. So it's going to be enhanced portrait. So I'll go ahead and click on it. And what it does, it automatically detects uh, the faces, smooths out the skin, uh, will whiten the teeth a little bit. So here, I'll bring it as an example. You can also decrease like how much of it do you want. So you can go all the way up to 200%. As you can tell, it smooths the skin out. I'll, I'll keep it at 100%. Uh, depending on the scenario, usually I will uh, straighten out the photo. 
So this is before, it's after, that looks better. Go into the masking tool, and as you can tell here, what the adaptive uh, portrait does is that it highlights the teeth, iris in the pupil, uh, facial skin, and it'll do it automatically for you. In this particular case, it only you know sends the facial skin. Since the bride has her eyes closed and her mouth is closed, and you can't see the teeth. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mask a couple. And then we're gonna reverse it. I'm gonna bring down the feather. And what I'm gonna do, I wanna give it a more of a soft look. So I'm gonna bring down the clarity. Okay. All right. Sometimes it depends. Sometimes you want to bring up the exposure. Sometimes you want to bring down the exposure. I'll probably bring it up a little bit. Point to zero. Now, one of the things is that I actually, I do want to preserve some of the detail in the dress. So I'm going to just bring down the highlights a little bit. That's good. All right, so this is the before and after. Show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna duplicate and inverse. Exposure. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the file. Just real quick, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and open it back up in the raw file. Uh, if you're on Windows, it's going to be Control Shift A, and it will open it back up in the raw format. Uh, so after you did everything, which here is not saved, apply previous settings. All right. I'm going to cancel this out, but I just wanted to save it as a preset. So I go ahead and save settings. And then here you can highlight and what you, what you want, what you don't want. Usually you don't want to highlight the crop tool uh, because depending on the photo, sometimes you don't want the crop. Uh, so you basically add in or remove anything that you didn't want. Same thing for the masking. Usually you don't put in the same mask into the into the file. All right, so here you can go ahead and hit save and then put a title on it. As you can tell, I have a bunch uh, depending on different weddings and also drone photography as well. All right, so I'm gonna cancel out of this. Control Z. I'm gonna cancel out. All right, so the next step that I usually go through is a select color. Here I have a bunch of presets that I already saved and I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So usually you'll start off with reds. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more red. Usually it'll give more vibrancy to the skin tones. Okay yellows now this could be different you know everybody's color taste is different or if you want to pull it put it as color palette Magentas. And 
that much to work with. I'm gonna go into the white. All right, so towards the right, it's gonna give more of that cyan look. To the left, it's gonna be more of a pink look. So I'm going a little bit more for the cyan look. All right, so if you're happy with the preset uh, for the selective color that you created, you go ahead, click here, uh, save select color preset, title it, click save, and then it's gonna be right in, right in this preset function right here. Okay, exit out. The next step, I usually go ahead and go into the curves. So the same concept is with the curves. What you can do, you can save it as a preset. And then depending on the scenario, you know, if it's sunny, cloudy, you're indoors, outdoors, uh, you'll always have to tweak no matter what kind of a preset you have saved. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and create another layer. I hit shift, click to the last layer, merge layers. So this is gonna be before and after. This is with color corrections and with curve tool. Okay, I might go ahead and open it in the raw format so I can mask. And here, what I'm gonna do. Once again, highlight the couple, or what you could do is select people. Okay, I'm gonna highlight Alt, create, and then inverse, or invert. And then you can mess around with the background. I'm gonna bring down the contrast and the clarity. I just wanted to give it more of a softer look. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay. Now, if you want it, you can create another copy. And if you really wanted to tweak around with the photo, you can go ahead and let's say you wanted to add a little extra highlight into the face. You can pick the dodge. Dodge is gonna be burning. I'm sorry, burn tool, and then dodge is gonna be bring up the highlights. So you can choose shadows, mid-tones, or highlights. So in this scenario, I'm gonna bring up the highlights. Oh, that's too much. Exposure, probably gonna bring it down to 15. And always use a soft tool. Bring a little bit of the highlights into the hair. All right, so that's before, after. Now that looks like too much. So what we can do is just decrease the opacity. And as you can tell here, it just gives it more of that 3D look. All right, so one of the other things that you can do, you can expand the photo. So here, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna expand it 
a little bit so that my subjects are directly in the middle. And this is generative expand tool in Photoshop. Now, if you have the Jack Sparrow version of Photoshop, you're not gonna have this tool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and generate. All right, it did a pretty good job. All right, so I'm gonna use this one. And there's a little button right here, is to upscale. So I'm gonna head it and click on it. It just basically adds more detail. It enhances the detail in the, whatever the tool generates. All right, so once you're done with that process, what I usually do, I go ahead and merge the layers. I uh, hit the crop tool. I'm gonna do the 16 by nine. Get my subjects in the frame. Hit enter and that's it. All right, so this is the before, what we started with. This is after. Now, after you save all your presets, it's a much quicker process. So once you start you know, going to your next photos for the rest of the wedding, it's going to be a much quicker uh, process. All right. Thank you. I uh, hope this helps. Hit a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you.